How much should you invest each month in order to have $800,000 if your rate of return is 3.1% compounded monthly and you want to achieve your goal in 40 years? Our first step is to decide now what type of problem this is. Well, right away, I know I'm compounding, but the question is, is it an annuity or just a simple compounding problem? Well, that depends if I'm doing scheduled deposits or one initial lump sum. It tells me that we're trying to find how much money we're investing each month. So that's scheduled deposits. And when you put compounding with scheduled deposits together, that means we're going to be looking at an annuity. So we are going to use our annuity formula, which says as follows, that our future principal is equal to our regularly scheduled deposit times 1 plus r over k raised to the nk minus 1, all divided by r over k. And in this formula, p sub n is the amount after n years, right? So this is our future principal, or the amount in the account. d is our scheduled deposit. R is our interest rate. K is the number of compounds per year. And N is the number of years. So let's fill out all of these pieces of information with the problem we have. We are told that we are looking to have 800,000. So that means my future principal is actually going to be 800,000. That's what we're looking at as our future principal. Our scheduled deposit, well, that we don't know, so that's actually what we're looking for. Our interest rate is going to be 0.031, or 3.1%. The number of compounds per year is going to be 12, because we're doing one each month. And the number of years is 40 to start. So let's put everything in our formula and let's solve. So for part one, the very first problem we are going to take, so I'll just write down for the very first problem we're going to have 800,000 equals our D, which we don't know, 1 plus R, 0 0.031, divided by K, which is 12, all raised to the N times K. Now I'm gonna go ahead and multiply those together. Just makes it easier when I plug things into a calculator. So I have N times K is actually 480, 12 times 40, right? And so that means I have 480 as my exponent, minus one, all divided by 0 0.031 over 12. Now, what's the first thing I need to do? Well, I need to solve for D. And in order to solve for D, I need to get rid of everything else. So my algebraic first step is going to be I'm going to multiply both sides of my equation by this quantity right here, 0 0.031 over 12. Because if I do it on the right side, it's going to cancel, right? So I'm going to do it to the right side. And I'm going to do it to the left side. That tells me on the left side that I'm going to have $800,000, and I'm going to multiply that times 0 0.031, and I'm going to divide by 12. That's my first step. So I'm just going to rewrite everything else that I have. This is raised to the 480 minus 1, and start there. All right, so far so good. Now what do I need to do? I need to get D by itself, which means I have to get rid of this part here, this whole quantity here, right here. So what do I need to do? I need to divide, or if I like, multiply both sides by 1 over this quantity. 1 plus 0 0.031 over 12 raised to the 480 minus 1. Now, when I divide on this side on the left, notice this is actually going in the denominator. This is my numerator, this is my denominator. So, on the left side, I can just put it down here in the denominator as 1 plus 0 0.031 over 12 to the 480 minus 1, right next to this 12. 
And that's going to actually be the expression that I'm going to want to plug into Desmos. I'm going to take 800,000, I'm going to multiply it times 0 0.031, then I'm going to divide by this quantity here, which is 1 plus 0 0.031 over 12 raised to the 480 minus 1 times 12. And this is what I'm going to plug into Desmos. I like to use Desmos because it keeps everything nice and neat. I can type it just as it is, and it spits out a, a number for me. So let's go ahead and go to Desmos and do that. Oh, by the way, I'll write that down quick. Um, www.desmos.com. Des, I spelled that wrong. www.desmos.com. And that's where I'm going to head to calculate this out. All right, after inputting the formula from Desmos, I get 800,000 times 0 0.031 divided by that entire quantity is equal to $843.50551589. Now, for the first part, we're going to round, okay? So the first answer block for D, asking how much we're going to deposit each month, is going to be $843.51 rounded up. So let me go back and put that in my first block, $843.51. So going back, $843.51. So that completes part one. Phew, all right, three more to go. So now we're going to move ahead to part two. For part two, we're asked how much interest are we going to earn? Well, how do we get the interest we're going to earn? We start by taking the amount of money that's in our account in the future, namely after 40 years, I'm gonna have a certain amount in my account, and I subtract from that the amount that I'm investing. Each month we're putting money in, over time, that will become the amount that I've invested after 40 years. And if I subtract that from the amount in the account that I want, so I'm going to take 800000 and I'm going to subtract from that my investment. Now, what is my investment? How am I going to calculate that? Well, I'm going to take my monthly payments, okay? So that's the money per month, right, that I'm investing, I'm going to multiply that times 12 because there's 12 months in a year. And then I'm going to multiply that times 40 because there are 40 years. This right here tells me how much money I'm actually investing. The amount each month times 12 months gives me one year of investment and then multiply that times 40 years. So again, we're going to head to Desmos and do that calculation. I'm going to use the amount that I already have from Desmos. I'm taking the 800,000 and I'm subtracting from it. These right here is our monthly payments, right? That I already have listed. So that's my monthly payments or my D, my deposit each month. I'm multiplying that times 12 because there's 12 months in a year and then there's 40 years that have to transpire. So when I take 800,000 minus the amount of money I'm investing, that tells me the leftover part, which is actually our interest. The interest is equal to $395,117.35. So this is the answer to part two. This is how much interest I've earned based on those monthly deposits. 395117 and 35 cents. Let's put that in the second block. So that is $395,117 and 35 cents. And that finishes part two. Now we move on to part three. Part three asks, how much should you invest each month in order to have $8,100 if you want to achieve your goal in 20 years? Hmm. Well, isn't this just restating 
Our first problem, how much should we invest each month in order to have $800,000 if we want to achieve our goal in 40 years? Well, this is the exact same repeat as the first part, except our amount of years has changed. So instead of having 40 years, this time our problem is asking us to do 20 years which means I'm going to be doing the exact same calculation as in my first part. I am looking for a monthly deposit, but this time instead of 40, I have 20. N is changing, everything else stays the same. So if my number of years changes to 20, then my N times K, or my 12 times 20 now becomes 240. And so I'm going to rewrite the same formula I had for part one, except I'm going to fix my NK and my number of years. Everything else stays the same. I'm still trying to earn $800,000. I still have an interest rate of 3.1%. So when I take and put zero, and I'm also, whoa, investing each month, so that's 12 in the denominator, but what changes is right here in the numerator, instead of 480, I have 240, and everything else stays the same. So the only thing actually that changed from my formula from part one to part two is this right here. 240 now becomes my exponent. NK is now 20 times 12. Everything else is identical. The cool thing about Desmos is you can keep that other expression and just go in and alter this one little thing and it'll give me my number up again. So let's go do that. Plugging into Desmos, what do we get? Notice the formula is identical to the top formula, except the difference is instead of 480, we sw swap the number and put 240 because now instead of 400, excuse me, instead of 40 years, we're looking at 20 years. So what now becomes our new monthly deposit? Our new monthly deposit now is going to be $2,410.27, $2,410.27, right here. That is my answer for part C, or the third part. Going back, we have $2,410 and 27 cents. All right, one more thing to complete. And that's part four. If we deposit this amount that we've used to achieve our goal in 20 years, how much will our savings be worth after 10 years? If we deposit the amount we needed to achieve our goal in 20 years, how much will our savings be worth after 10 years? Oh, so now, now we have a different question. We're depositing this amount of money, $2,410.27. So that becomes our deposit, $2,410.27. And we are asked, what will our savings be worth? In other words, what is our future amount after 10 years? So it's a little slightly different question or a slightly different question there. We're looking for the amount after 10 years. We have a new D value. Our R value stays the same. Our K value stays the same. Our N value is now 10 years, so our KN or NK, if you like, sorry, I flipped the order, but NK, KN is the same thing, is 12 times 10 or 120. 
we are now going to take our annuity formula and let me erase a little bit of space here and make it so that we can actually see what we're doing. So if you guys are okay, I'm going to erase this spot here. And I'm oh, whoops. And I'm going to plug in, I'm going to plug in. Oh my goodness, Tina, having a rough day today. I'm going to plug in the formula. In other words, we're looking for our future amount after 10 years. To get that, we have to plug into the formula $2,410.27, which is our monthly deposit, or D. We're going to multiply that by 1 plus 0 0.031 over 12, raised to the 120 minus 1, and divide that whole thing by 0 0.31 over 12. This is a massive problem. This is taking a lot of thinking. But we are so close to being done. Here we go. We're going to pull up Desmos again. And this time we're going to plug in this formula that's going to give us our future amount or our savings amount after 10 years, investing the amount that we needed to get our goal in 20 years. Here we go. Plugging this big formula right into Desmos. With all those variables multiplied out like we said, we get this amount right here in our account. So in 10 years, investing $2,410.27, we get a total of $338,570.06. Oh my. That's what goes in our last box. That is... If we deposit the money needed to achieve our goal in 20 years, our savings will be worth $338,570.06. And that finishes our problem. That was a long one. Please reach out if you have any questions, Rewatch this video, and if you do have any concerns or don't quite understand any of the little parts, please just reach out and let me know.